don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I've been fucking around with my, uh, trying to set up an ass, and that's not been going well. A what? That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, network attached storage. Ah, oh, gotcha. I dig it. Yeah, I was, I was doing it from scratch, so, yeah. Um... I, I shucked two hard drives. Oh, 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 man. Oh, man. Talking about hard drives, you just reminded me. We have at work, we have a computer that we use for simulation. It's, um... It, I'll say it costs about as much as a car. And we wanted to add an additional hard drive to it. And it's, um... It's, it's more or less a... I don't want to say pre-built. It's one of the Dell computers where you can tell them what you want in it and the, they send it to you. Yeah. And we wanted to add a hard drive. The problem was that there, um, you would take the hard drive. Oh, well, I hit the mic. So your hard drive doesn't fit into the slot because it's more or less like if you look at the front of the computer, you can just push hard drives into it. There's yep, um, yep. a kit that you have to press the hard drive into first. It snaps on. Then you press the hard drive and the adapter kit into the slot. Mm -hmm. Well, we had the hard drive, and we needed to get the kit so you could press it in, the, the little adapter. Mm -hmm. And uh, after, luckily, I was I was just out on the side sort of laughing for a few hours. They, the, the idea is we want to call Dell and purchase just the kit. And after four hours with one of our engineers and the IT guy, they called... Uh, the service department, who then said that uh, you have to go through sales for that, but also we can't um, do the thing where you press the button on the phone and send you to someone else's extension, so you have to recall sales. So that that was an hour. They spoke to sales, and sales said, oh, you have to call this other department. So they spoke to about four different departments across four hours. Uh... And, and it got to the point where, like, our IT guy was taking pictures and point with his finger pointing at something. And he's just like, <laughs> we want to buy this. And, um, oh, like, he boy. was like, here's, here is the number that's on the sticker for this one. Comp they just couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. It Here's the problem. It, it's a, uh. It's a, I'll say air quotes because there's like check boxes, but it's more or less the, if you go to the Dell website, it's like the most, their premium, it's the top of the webpage when you go to this specific area out of the list of all of them. It's more mm -hmm. or less a stock product and they, they we were told, oh, we don't, uh, we don't make that anymore. Like, how do you not make the, the, for a off the shelf, you know, like 11, 12, 15, whatever it was, thousand dollar computer. That's your flagship product. How do you s just say that you don't make the adapter kit? So, I don't know. That that was that was fun. I'm happy I didn't have to deal with that. I was just sort of laughing, and that wasn't making anybody else happier. But it made me happier. So, uh, I did that. So, not to... not, not to, to uh, I've got a, our first watch. So, there's a do 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 type thing. Yeah. Um, it's not a cryptid. Okay. It's a kaiju watch. Kaiju watch. Wait a minute. Wait a so, minute. What's this? So, while you were talking, I was coming to this page to queue up uh, the announcement that the kaiju designs for King Ghidorah, oh, no Rodan, shit. and Mothra from Godzilla King of the Monsters releasing 2018 have, have been released. Holy shit. Yeah, from SH. And they look gorgeous. But, as you were talking... Um, like as you're reaching the most dramatic part of your story, yeah, the music that's playing on this website cut in, ah. <laughs> and I think it's the music from the trailer, like the background music. I'm not sure. Yeah, totally. But, but that music started playing like as things started to get real, <laughs> and what you were saying, and I'm like, is Brandon? 
is is Brandon starting to play something <laughs> to like no. hit home the fact that everything was like bonkers? <laughs> And yeah, no. So, uh, um, I, I've tried. I've tried to get that set up, but it's uh, turns out that's a pain in the ass. Uh, so I don't so do it. I think I know how to do it, and I have the card to do it because uh, it has multiple inputs and has a line in. Yeah, I was trying to do it non-physical, so you can do it physical, yeah. and you can do it with a mixer and a sound card. I was trying to do it with like virtual audio cables, but for whatever reason, that works for literally everybody else but my specific set of hardware. Well, that's eh, your fault. It happens. But um yeah. Yeah. I had by the way the best morning ever. I woke up, listen to this, naturally. No alarm. I just sort of woke up when I wasn't asleep anymore. It was fantastic. It was great. So I woke up. Uh-huh. I uh I had a beer cuz I was like, "Listen, I w- did a natural wake up. I'm a fucking adult." I'll have a beer. So I had that. I did that. I uh, I did the read through through my copy, and then I watched Ellis Mania for like an hour. It was it, it was fantastic. What was that? Ellis Mania. So imagine this takes place in uh, the Hard Rock in Vegas once a year, and it's mm-hmm. all on YouTube. But it's sort of like Jackass meets MMA. So okay. They're in a stadium with a boxing ring, but they'll have like. The skinniest guy against a heavyweight champion, but start wrapping duct tape around the arms of the heavyweight guy. And they okay. they have, uh, they have, I was just watching right before we started. Um, it's, there's four guys in a ring. They all get blindfolded and they all get dog collars, like dog shot collars put on. Mm-hmm. And they're handed out to members of the audience, the controllers for the dog shot. So it's a blindfolded dog shot collar boxing the, even the ref takes one because you know nobody can see. It's great. Holy shit! One guy's like, there's a heavyweight champ in there. There's also just a guy dressed like Elvis. It's fantastic. They do musical chairs, where there's two instead of being one chair down, there are two chairs down, and basically they play the music, and the last two people standing have to box, and they're all like this... dressed up. There's no like, there's nothing that says you have to be of equal weight and skill. It's just like a guy. Kind of with a little bit of a beer gut, dressed as Elvis, who's like five something against like a six something, two hundred and fifty pound. This sounds like Tickled, the documentary. Oh, you know, it's sort of like Tickled, but if everybody's aware of everything. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, That makes me feel uncomfortable. It's. I, I don't know. It's great. That and like, if you have the caller and you have a guy, like the 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 big guy, they don't start at ten on the shot caller, but they start at a level which apparently is the exact right level. Mm-hmm. Where if you're uh, so, it's Jason Ellis is the radio host. He gets one of the controllers, and he goes, "Uh, I don't know what it does, but I found that if you." Take the cover off and push the batteries up farther. That guy just sort of fall like you'll have like a big dude just drop straight to the floor, and as he's falling, someone takes him in the back of the head. Oh, 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 oh. they're blindfolded, so they don't know. This is violent. It, it's violent. It's uh, I don't know. It, it, it's like a once a year in Vegas, like Jackass uh, meets boxing or whatever. It's it's okay. definitely not for everybody, but if. <laughs> If you did a natural wake-up, it's good. (laughs) Welcome to The Wallop, the show where contestants with what my doctor calls Nerdbag are locked in one of Cryptopedia's patented crypto containment uh, cages and throw what they consider punches until the loser breaks his glasses. The winner is gifted a mint condition Black Lotus Magic the Gathering card while the loser is forced to clean the sheep squatch cages with his mouth. I'm Brandon. I'm John. Um, I'm not convinced that Sheep Squatch is not Pizza McDonald's, though. No? No. So, here's my rationale. Okay. Both were discovered yes. in the 1990s. Oh, shit. Okay. We have both, a connection. Both dis- disappeared after the 1990s. Yeah. Here's my thinking. Mc- the McDonald's Corporation <laughs> harvested so many Sheep Squatch. <laughs> 
the cheese with sheep squatch milk. Exactly. They over harvested. Oh man. So that's that's why Pizza McDonald's yeah. isn't around anymore. And that's why there was only one McDonald's that had Pizza McDonald's. Yeah. Because that one McDonald's had a had a sheep squatch in captivity. Holy shit. That's my hypothesis. Yeah. And, and for, you know what? Yeah. You know what? What? No one can disprove it. That is perfect logic. <laughs> and because no one can disprove it, that means it's fact. Fact. Correct? Correct. I yeah, believe. yeah. That's, that's totally how facts work. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, whatever. And for those who don't know what we're referencing, uh, either go and listen to the Sheep Squatch episode or listen to Pizza at McDonald's, the investigative journalism podcast, because apparently McDonald's used to serve pizza. And uh, it it's like an avant-garde, but actually interesting type of yeah guy. I couldn't do it. Like, if all of our podcasts had to be on the same topic, and he's trying to get to the bottom of it. I could probably do all our, our uh, episodes about the Enfield Horror. Really? Just, you know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it would it would definitely broaden out. I'd probably have to call up Lauren Coleman at least once. Yeah. Um, yeah. He didn't respond to our email. No. <laughs> yeah, he kind of ignored us. Yeah. So, Somewhat not really surprised. Not surprised. But, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried to get this, the footage, the the audio of uh, the Enfield Horror for you guys, but um, that duck didn't hunt. I can put it at the end as the uh, the screaming cowboy again. <laughs> no, we don't need screaming cowboy again. He's done his work. He's done his job. Oh man, this week's monster was first discovered in 1855. It has never been seen. It may be described as a humanoid, and there are no modern settings. Do you have any guesses on what it could be? I do, but here's the problem. Yes. I saw your tweet. You saw? Oh, yeah. Which gave away what it was. Did it? So me. I posted yeah. the tweet. You could see the title of the episode, but not uh, I the, the monster's name didn't appear in there. Well, so what I did was oh, you Googled. I was bad. You Googled. I, well, I was like, okay, Krampus, Jersey Devil, those were in the 18... The, the, the Jersey Devil was the 1800s. Was Krampus then? So I searched Krampus uh, 1855, and yeah. the hit for what you were doing came up. Okay, we will see if you are correct. Devil's Footprints. Uh, Devin England. Yeah, yeah, no, you're... you're yeah. You're, so you're I'm, correct. I'm not going to consider that me having supernatural abilities. I'm going to consider that me having good googling abilities. You have good googling abilities. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I also doubt that you've had the ability to look it up in that period of time, <laughs> in this short, short amount of time. Um, but let's yes. see. This week's monster is the devil. Maybe, but probably not. I mean, definitely not. Definitely not. I'm going to say definitely not. Like, uh, well, uh, so now that the skeptic in me is, is going to say, yeah, probably not, because that's the correct way of saying it. But yeah. just because it's probably not doesn't mean that there's a real legitimate possibility. Uh-huh. True. Okay. So, uh, um... like, yeah. <laughs> February 8th, 1855. Okay, so we we're doing this. So we are doing the wallop. Yeah. No. Yeah. I okay. totally wrote it like a wallop. <laughs> All right. I was. I. I had the feeling that was how this was going to shake out. All right. Oh let's yeah. Continue. Yeah. The. Uh, we. I think we've both been listening to an inordinate or inord a lot of the dollop. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's pretty good. It's, I recommend it. It's totally recommended. This is our uh, my my dollop fan cast. The weather was unusually cold. Temperatures remained around free... Well, hang on. Hang on. I'll read after I share a link, because I'm a good guy. You are... Are you? I mean... Are not, either of us? Not really. The things we've done. The, the... The sins... The sins we've committed. 
I mean, I commit foods. I commit food sins pretty regularly. Do you? Yeah. Well, you, you've seen the food sins. I've seen how you eat tacos. And oh, hey, this, look, there's Cortana. This, I'm going to share this with the listeners because everyone has to know how bad of a person you are. When That's John fair. eats tacos, he lays the tortilla on the plate first, puts all the beef toppings, beans, onions, chili, whatever, on top. Yep. And then, and then... You know how how you take a taco and you fold the soft tortilla? If it's a hard tortilla, get the fuck out of here. That's not a real taco. You fold the tortilla, mm -hmm. and then you bring it to your mouth. He more leaves it on the plate like an open-faced sandwich and lowers his face perpendicular to the food and just starts eating like a monster. No, mm -hmm. I, it's you should be thrown in jail just for that. Well, I, I actually am in jail. <laughs> it's a mental jail. Ah, I, I believe it. Did you get? Were you able to get into the link? Uh, yes. Okay, dope. Yes, I was. You have so, a typo. Did, listen, get the fuck out of here. How is Weeks a typo? W e e k s. It's possessive. The oh. weak owns the monster. Oh, I got it. I got it. So in February eighth, eighteen fifty five, the weather was unusually cold. The temperatures remained around freezing from January until March, which makes sense for those who don't know January, at least in the United States. January uh, 17th, I think it is, is the coldest day of the year every year, and that remains the coldest day for, for a little while until it starts to warm up. Mm, okay. M many rivers were frozen. Among them, the, uh, the Exe and the Tigon in Devon. Too cold for a thaw, each winter shower added to the massive snow. In one instance, even a feast was held on one of the frozen rivers. An individual first wrote about this in a letter to the Exeter and Plymouth Gazette. Sir, Thursday night, the 8th of February, brackets, 1855, was marked by a heavy fall of snow, followed by rain and boisterous wind from the east and in the morning frost. The return of daylight revealed the ramblings of some most busy and mysterious animal, endowed with the power uh, of ubiquity as its footprints were seen in all sorts of unaccountable places. On the tops of houses, narrow walls, in gardens and courtyards, enclosed by high walls and palings. As well as in open fields, the creature seemed to have frolicked through the Exmouth Little Limb Limpstone, Woodbury, Topsham, and Starcross and Tynan Mouth uh, areas. There's hardly a garden in Limpstone where his footprints are not observable, and in his parish he seems to have gambled about with inaccessible activity. Its tracks appear to be more of that of a biped than a quadruped, and the steps are generally 8 inches in advance of each other, though in some cases 12 or 14. And whoa, alter whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Whoa. That's an extremely tiny gate. Yeah, this little, little tiny, little tiny feet. Little so tiny, here's my tiny question. Feet. Yeah. Did Mr. Tumnus get out of Narnia again? Did Mr. Tumnus get out? You know, it's possible. Well, he might have gotten too drunk on Turkish delights, which apparently are gross candy. From what I've heard. <laughs> I believe it. There were probably a lot of wardrobes about in, uh, in this time period. I mean, yeah. 1855. Mm-hmm. Think that's about when the first Chronicles of Narnia book happened. Really? Although, okay. well, no, no, like in the lore. Um, yeah. No, no, I dig it. Although in that book, in that book, uh, it wasn't a wardrobe; it was a magic tree. Was it? Oh no, shit! Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the the tree became the wardrobe and all that stuff, and there were some yeah. rings and. <sighs> <laughs> oh. And the prince alternated like the steps of a man. And it would be included between two parallel lines six inches apart. So he that's That's a that, tiny man. That's a tiny man. That's also super descriptive because he's he's based he's telling you how far apart laterally each print is and widthwise, which um I would say is abnormally descriptive, but I guess 1855, they had a little bit more time on their hands. It's actually not as inordinately descriptive, believe it or not. No? No. Okay. 
Um, but generally speaking, these types of footprints of footprint events are not like, uh, just because there's footprints, that doesn't mean anything. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The impression of the foot closely resembles that of a donkey's shoes and measures from an inch and a half to, in some cases, two inches and a half across. There are appearing as if the foot was cleft, but in general, the steps, the uh, the, the the impression of the shoe is con- continuous and perfect. In the center, the snow remained entire, merely showing the outer crust of the foot, which therefore must have been convex. The creature seems to have advanced on the doors of several houses and then to have retraced its steps, but no one is able to discern from the starting or the resting point of the mysterious visitor. So here's my question. Yeah. Is it a deer doing handstands? It might be a deer doing handstands. Just based on everything, it sounds like a deer or a donkey doing handstands. That's plausible. Like that's that's my hypothesis. That's my working theory. Okay. Um, deer or donkey doing handstands or a dog <laughs> wearing donkey footprints walking around like on two legs just messing with people. <laughs> I, I think that's my say, that's favorite. That's a quadruped, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's just kind of like hopping around like, look, uh-huh. look at what I can do. And no one's paying attention because it's dark. Yeah. He's the first yeah, sentient yeah. dog. The first sentient dog. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's who created these footprints. The first sentient dog. Mm-hmm. Mark it. That's what's happening. I know it. <laughs> Everyone is wondering, but no one is able to explain the mystery. The poor are full of superstition and consider it little short of a visit from old Satan or one of his imps. The track supposedly went right up to people's doors on top of roofs, over walls, and through haystacks, storm drains, and over rivers. Whatever it was uh, that left these prints must have had gallons of Red Bull. Because apparently, the creature overnight traveled anywhere from 40 to 100 miles. So there's two things here. Yes. One, I didn't realize that you were dropping out of the quote at first. So okay. when you said must have had gallons of Red Bull, I'm like, you thought that's the real mystery here. 1855. No, no, no. There's one, two, three, four. So five lines up is the end quote. I should have put yes. like a line break or a tab oh, oh. or something. Well, no, 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 no. I know that. I know that. But what I'm saying is listening to you all uh. of a sudden – you you dropped into gallons of Red Bull. Yeah. So, here's my thinking. If yes. it was 1855, uh-huh. Red Bull would be an invaluable resource. It would be. Because oh, yeah. you would never you would you wouldn't have had the Wright brothers wouldn't have been a thing. No. Everyone would have wings. <laughs> Good joke, John. That was that was a very there I find the humor in there humorous. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so this is literally a, a dollop episode. Now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I took the time to sort of write a dollop, but if they did um, mysterious well, happenings. Well, no, Rupert Gold. I feel like he was on a, a dollop episode. I could be wrong. It's possible I'm a few hundred in, so it's hard. My recall isn't that great. <laughs> I, should, I should know. I just kind of... Uh... I kind of blew up your spot on that one, but Rupert Gold sounds familiar to me. No, 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 it's totally, totally. (laughs) Fair enough. So Rupert Gold pointed out to cross even 40 miles, supposing the steady progress and a generous 14 hours of darkness with the generally reported stride of around eight inches would require the perpetrator to move at the rate of six steps per second. And below, I've uh, included a map of where the steps were found. The lower right-hand corner of the map the uh, dotted line shows where these crossed. And if you were so inclined, you could become a patron and see this map. You you and your your shameless plugs. Yeah. Oh, Although yeah. that being said, uh, patrons do get us money. So <laughs> for books, for realsies, like... Uh, and this isn't this isn't from the patron money, but I'm I'm building a reading room and game like board game room on the second floor of my house. It's gonna be dope as hell. As That's you... what he's spending all the Patreon money on, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of we our did two get bucks that private jet, and that was 
I mean, I won't call it an abuse of resources, but I mean, it's a private jet. It was an abuse of research <laughs> resources, and you know it. As you would expect, this caused locals to group up and search for whatever it was that may have made the tracks. And Dawlish, an armed group of local tradesmen, followed some tracks from the local churchyard to uh, to Lescombe, Dawlish Water, and then Oakland's, a total distance of around five miles without discovering anything material. So no one, other than this uh, Rupert Gold, no one's like, yeah, 40 miles. Everyone seems to be like, yeah, 40 miles. This could totally be the devil. Yeah. I, I, I just want to imagine the six steps per second thing. <laughs> so that's kind of like a, uh, what is it, the ring? I think I could or get... Or the grudge, yeah. where she kind of just does that weird, like, thing, and she just, like, appears. Yeah. I think if I Except... run, I could do four steps a second. Because that's, that like... me thinking. Yeah, but if, if One your One Mississippi. Gate... There you go. Right. Maybe three. All right. Let me see you run for more than three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> See, I called you. I knew. I knew how it would turn out. I, I said I have the ability to run, not that I would. Like, outside, I don't know why people run to begin with outside of, like, survival. Come on. You're just showing off. At Clist St. George, on the other side of the River X, two villagers following a trail through a field discovered four oblong globes of whitish excrement the size of a large grape alongside the tracks. Others from mm. the same area remarked on how their tracks had stopped and started suddenly in the middle of fields. So we've got Devil Whitish Dookie. Whitish excrement? Yeah. Is it Devil Dookie, though? It's probably Devil Dookie. Hmm. All right. Hmm. It. I'm not, I'm not going to touch that, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is no surprise that this caught the attention... Uh, one paper in Australia uh, published an article, Panic Caused by the Appearance of the Devil in Devonshire. So I have a quick question. Yes. Um, because the Y and V keys are nowhere near each other. Yes. Uh, this is Panic Caused by the Appearance of the Devil in Devonshire. Now, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> My question now becomes... How did you manage to uh, typo a V instead of a Y? Because, because now, the B key is next to the V key on a standard uh, QWERTY P uh, yeah. keyboard. Uh -huh. The Y key is up three diagonal from the V key. I'm not going to blow up your spot, but Brandon, that is a prodigious, prodigious typo. So I have... A fantastic excuse. Sure. Um, and I also used the same resource on the Madagascar uh, worm episode. If you scroll all the way down into the resources, somewhere there's going to be a website that has a .au. There's an Australian website that takes scanned newspaper articles, and I, I imagine they run a script or an algorithm. Like, it, it translates okay. them into plain text. So what I did was I essentially copied the plain text um, and put that in here. Because they okay. looked over the scanned copy of the newspaper. Okay, sure. So, yeah. so that's where it came from. So some some computer somewhere thought Y and V looked similar and, and, and replaced them. You're, you're taking my, my good, good joke about your inability to type. <laughs> and you're turning it into a legitimate, a legitimate explanation. <laughs> you're blowing up my spot. <laughs> Below is a table collating the location, size, spacing, description, and source of many of these footprints. While the size varies from one and a half inches to two and a half inches in length to four inches by two and a half inches long, or wide, rather. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. That's four times the the width. There, it, it, it is, yeah. And the spacing from eight to 16 inches, nearly all of the descriptions describe some sort of hoof, whether it be cloven or other lies. And if you scroll down to the next page... There's this table, and this table describes the location, Dolowish, Limscone, uh, uh, Xmith, uh, Newton Abbott, and it gives the size of each footprint, the spacing of each footprint, the description, and the source 
where each description came from. So I here you, you see the variety um, that, that is actually in these footprints outside of what was listed in that original news article. So I'm going to blow up your spot now. Yeah. Did you make this table? No. No? No. Okay. There is – so this I, I copped from a – there is a uh, – there is a scholarly um, – uh, no, it wasn't – I'm drawing a blank. Some – some some the, there's an academic article, and in that article it, it listed this. So someone else did okay. the work uh, uh, to make this. Because I was going to say, this is not up to snuff for you for tables. I've no. seen some of your tables. This is a <laughs> this is a pale imitation of a good table. I mean the the um, the the kerning is not right. The, the folding is not right. They didn't make special like you know alternating colors. I mean, yeah. there's just so much wrong with this table. Like there's blank descriptions. Like you, you should put something in there, and then it, it, it alters between quotes and no quotes. Ugh. I would have fixed it if I could have gotten the fort like I could if I could have copied it out with formatting. I didn't fix it, and and uh, you're right about my love of tables because I've had uh, multiple multiple different engineers approach me and say I think you like Excel a little too much. <laughs> I would argue you. I would argue it's almost a fetish level for you. Oh yeah, you you can't you can't enjoy life without. Uh, Without a good table explaining it. No, actually, fun. I just made a, uh, I just made a, a spreadsheet for fun yesterday. Um, apropos of nothing, but it was a uh, time a, a, a timesheet attendance record at work that I'm going to distribute for the new year. So I made, I, I listed everyone's their vacation, their personal hours. I made a table for each month and each day of the month and. Um, blacked out weekends and I listed the company holidays and all of that and then I put down on the bottom a, a, a table listing for if you were absent um, if it was a sick day, no call, jury duty service, military service and, and sort of broke everything out so so January 1st I'm going to distribute that to the uh, department because everybody likes also it's not a weird thing to find that everybody in engineering has their own separate little thing for tracking their own time. But that's enough of a nerd rant. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a nerd rant. That's like a – that's that goes beyond nerd rant in some way, and I can't really properly articulate how. But it's it's like beyond nerd rant, and it's <laughs> – it's kind of like how there's Thunderdome and Beyond Thunderdome. Yeah. It's like the sequel to a nerd rant. <laughs> and it's got Mel Gibson in there somewhere. Freedom! Just just watch out. You got yeah. you, you can't go too far down the nerd rant path cuz then then things get kind of uh kind of bad. Things get real. Things get real real bad. Oh. Oh god. This is because of your nerd rant this time. I I, I know it. They're taking they're taking an early <laughs> They're taking early uh preventative measures against your nerd rants. They I was at management they, they sent me an email. They said because of my uh, uh Office three sixty they wanted to move away from those products to a, a third party non subscription based um table service. But I mean I can't I, I mean, Excel's the, o, Excel's the OG spreadsheet, and I, uh, all right. Actually, it wasn't. That was Lotus Notes. I don't get me fucking started on fucking Lotus Notes, man. I can't. Hey, fellow humans. No sponsor this week. However, there is an update. I received correspondence from Katie Knight, our regional sales representative at Vagloves. Due to the outstanding response of Cryptopedia's fans to the Vagloves ad in episode 2, Enfield Horror, there are no longer enough members of the lesser housed community to continue to manufacture Vagloves in their current location. Sales will be suspended until they complete their relocation 
to an undisclosed warehouse somewhere in eastern Detroit. When sales resume, all our listeners will receive a 20% discount on all orders by using discount code BIGFOOT at checkout. Now back to the show. <laughs> Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of. Oh, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> so. I was doing that because I wanted to give you some audio. Uh, like, a, I was hoping you would find out about that. Like, as you were editing. <laughs> and I was playing with uh, Dead Wing, Red Wing, so. Listen, there's a lot of stuff in my room, my office, and I'm playing with it. There's. <laughs> That's how you get hairy palms. Mm-hmm. That is. <laughs> Which so Dreadwing anyways, is that? Huh? Which Dreadwing is that? It's uh, the G2 Dreadwing that was uh, released during the Thrilling 30. Not, okay. No. Gener- it was the, the 20th anniversary. The one that gave us the, um, the... It was the line that gave us the new Rhinox. God. Oh. Is that the one that's downstairs in the uh, in the case? The It's the one that I uh, I found for you and gave you one time. Yeah. That... Rhinox, I have to say, is maybe one of not not no not maybe. Rhinox is my favorite uh, Beast Wars across the board. TV show and the original video game, he was my favorite to play. Rat mm-hmm. Trap is is a close second. Optimus is third, and um, I don't know. R- Rhinox was just always up there for me. That's fair. I mean, personally, Cheetor's way better, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Cheetor's Cheetor's up there. He's I would say he's number four. Dinobots number five. Um, oh come on! Oh really? Dinobots at least number two. At least he well, had I mean, he has there's a he lot. Has the, he has the best episode for himself out of any character in the series. That's Day that, of the that Hero. is actually true. Day of the Hero is literally the best 30 minutes of Transformers media yeah. to ever exist. Oh, man. Holy shit. And then, so here, here the continuation of list will then be, um, uh, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I won't go through the list. That's, uh, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, there's a lot of Beast Wars. The facts are as follows. Well, and the, one. And then Sc- what? And then Scorp- Scorponok is five. Yeah. Where's Dinobots Dino- two? Dinobots two. Uh, Beast Wars Megatron is three. Okay. Because of David K. Um, Silverbolt is four because he's amazing. Yeah. Tarantulas is last. Mainly because it's Mike's favorite and I want to mess with him. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's that's all that matters. Really? Everyone else is great. What about the... Okay, I was going to say, what about Big Ant Guy? Inferno? For yeah. the royalty, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to appeal to exactly five of the people who listen to this podcast who enjoy Beast Wars. Yeah, our goal is to narrow the scope of people who would find this podcast interesting significantly. Mm-hmm. We're, we're trying to not expand it at all, and yeah. we're just trying to make it, like, a super narrow cast. Uh-huh. In fact, um, don't share this with your friends, whatever you do, and don't share this with anybody on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. No. <laughs> Say, if you... Well, actually, well, if you don't like the person, you can always share the podcast with them. True. Because then, then, you don't have a friend anymore. <laughs> No, they, we're, we're yeah. joking. We're joking. Please. Please Sh- talk to people. Share, like, Please. subscribe. We're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. There are many theories about this, 
which make me very happy because most of them are ridiculous. I'll start with the weird ones and end with mine. Okay. Theory one. The Anglicans. It has been posited that the low church Anglicans were out to make a point, hoaxing the tracks to show that the devil was really out in the world. This is attempting to explain some of the uniformity of the tracks, specifically near Topsham and nearby the hay bale. So here's my thought on that, having done a lot of research. Yeah. Um, for the uh, dog of Bungay, the black dog of Bungay. Yeah. That's super plausible. Is it? Do I think that's insane? I thought that was a crazy one. No. No, that one's actually super plausible. Uh, The Anglican Church was kind of insane back in the day. Okay. Well, because they were uh, 1855. Okay, so this is after they've been really set up. But they're... Yeah... Uh, the Anglican Church is kind of intense. They're the like super puritanical ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, although they're a different <laughs> form of puritanical than the Puritans that showed up in America. And there's a okay. So a podcast could be made literally just on the different forms of Protestantism, Protestantism, yeah. because there's just like basically what it boils down to is. No, no, your version has this small minor detail slightly wrong, so you're a sinner and you're going to hell. Yeah. That's almost almost 100% <laughs> of the arguments so, are that. Yeah, yeah. For the listener, and wh- I want to preface this with, this is by no means shade throwing. If anyone's wondering what that clicking is, John is somehow looking into the camera while transforming... A transformer. I know how it transforms. It was like watching someone talk and do a Rubik's cube. Well, you know, (laughs) you don't get you don't get over six hundred transformers and not know how to transform. So that's true. That's true. That is actually it. It it was it was impressive. (laughs) There's a point where it's like, is he? He is. (laughs) Oh yeah, no, no, I. It was in front of me, and I didn't want to leave him in a half-transformed state. He's also one of the coolest design. I'll make a Transformers fan cast. Don't worry. <laughs> it's just going to be me playing with Transformers and just mumbling to myself. There's a we could use it for Patreon content. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no Anglicans <clears throat> as an explanation is actually a pretty good one. Yeah. Theory two, Badgers. English oh, shout out to Chunt. <laughs> Chunt, king of the badgers. Badger. <laughs> Bing bong. important. Get wet. <laughs> Getting wet. Getting nuts. English anatomist and paleontologist Richard Owens suggests that the prints were made by badgers. However, I think this idea seems weak. Owens' own theory was confronted by Rupert Gold arguing that a badger's paw print is staggered as it is rather wide in tread and the result would be double line of prints. He wrote, in addition, uh, that a badger could hardly have made the tracks seen on the roof drop, rooftops and probably could not have been responsible for those found in closed gardens. Below, I've included... included <clears throat> below, I've included an... In- Words is hard, man. They are. Below, I've included an illustration of several types of the purported tracks. If you are a hodag, second... This one was written in. I'm just reading the script. The other one was a, a natural plug. If you're a hodag, a $2 a month Patreon supporter, you can see these. For the listeners, a series of tracks is seen side by side, uh, and they are shown to represent deer, rabbit, fox, badger, and other which I assume is a balloon dragging a string near some animal tracks. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's not other, it's otter. Oh, it's otter. Okay. Um, so here's my, um, here's the thing. This was in snow, snow, right? This was in snow. Yeah. Okay. So this, this comes up on the Yeti a lot. Yeah. Um, snow is actually not that great 
of a medium for tracking tracks. For one very, two very important reasons. One, yeah, uh, snow sometimes will fall in if the powder is not like you know solid. Yeah. So it, it'll obfuscate how the the tracks look. I dig it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two, depending on when you find the track, and this is key, depending on when you find the track, it'll have done some melt, which means it uh-huh. actually looks larger or a different shape than it originally yeah. was. That's a very important point. Um, it is. And it, it, it comes to do, it actually is incredibly important to a lot of footprint, footprint based cryptids. Wow. Footprint based <laughs> cryptids. No, totally true. A hundred percent. Yeah, man. Theory three, balloons. The idea that the tracks were made by a balloon trailing rope or strings was floated more recently. I won't go in depth as the uniformity of the reported tracks, uh, to me, rules this out. I just wanted to mention it because it was someone brought that up. So what's the hypothesis here? Some, somebody shot a clown that was carrying a bunch of balloons and they just (laughs) spread out over the English countryside. Is that the hypothesis? We all float down here. Clearly not well enough. <laughs> if they're making tracks, they're not floating that great. Yeah. It was posited that uh, a balloon of some sort was dragging a, a rope and made these tracks. That seems a little bit ridiculous. That Wait. was more an attempt to, to try to explain, I believe at least, that it was an attempt to explain the area that was covered overnight. Not necessarily the uniformity of the tracks, which to me so, would rule that out. This is in a period where I don't think that helium balloons exist. So if my if my reading of this is correct, yeah. They mean hot air balloon? Uh yes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah cuz oh, okay. helium helium was discovered in 1868. This took place in 1855. So helium out of the picture. This is this is a hot air balloon gone rogue. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that I didn't just hear that, and my imagination is now uh, time traveling. Pogo the clown. Yeah, no, that's plausible. I don't see mm-hmm. any reason why we should rule that out. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> Murder clown. Murder clowns. Theory um, four. Birds. The idea birds? that birds. Yeah, birds. Yeah, okay. the idea that birds are the culprit has come up. This seems to be more an attempt to explain, again, the anomalous tracks on roofs and walls than anything else. So a lot of these theories only address one of the many aspects of these tracks. I mean, here's my thinking. That's yeah. fine. Because a hundred miles for one creature is insane. Yeah, no, that's fucking crazy. I'm sorry. No, that's... No, that is fucking crazy. I won't even... Yeah. I won't even... <laughs> yeah, no, no. We don't need to censor that one, because that's the fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Theory five. Cats. It's a always tenant... cats. It's always cats. My cats are demons. Yeah. My cats... Oh, okay. Cat rant. I woke mm-hmm. up early Friday because I heard noise behind my headboard. Okay. I got up and I look over. Mulder, my uh, one of my two cats, has pica. I'm mm-hmm. diagnosing it as pica because she eats a lot of non-food items. Yeah. This was the first time she's ever chewed on an AC cable. She only chews, generally, DC power and signal cables. And for those of you who don't know, my cat in one day when I first moved into the house chewed through maybe $100 worth of HDMI and DC power cable uh, adapters. <laughs> so I went and I built a front for my entertainment center to keep her out. <laughs> but she, on that day, was chewing through the, I have an extension cable that runs under my bed and uh, sp- forks out to go to the lamps on either side of the bed. Mm-hmm. She's chewing right where it plugs into the wall outlet. I was like, oh man, this, this is, this is, it's one thing to chew through DC stuff because that's just annoying, but AC is also dangerous to the cat. Yeah, well, I, I have like, this, I have this theory. Yeah. That, that cats just, sometimes I feel like cats just want to die. 
because fair that's fair some of the things that cats do are just so clearly counterintuitive to their own survival yeah like they have literally no survival instinct in some situations yeah so i i just sprayed the back wall that whole area where the cables come out of the wall with um uh bittering spray which i also spray my tree with so they don't chew on the tree <laughs> until they acquire the taste for bittering yeah. spray but in I, which I case was... it's it's the most delicious delicious seasoning oh yeah i was convinced i was going to come home to like a cat-shaped burn mark like from christmas vacation <laughs> that, and i think she was <sighs> doing it specifically to annoy me because in that area, my bed is a, a, it is a, I can sleep like a capital X in the middle. It's a big old bed and it's like mm -hmm. a solid wood. Um, for, I can't move it. I mm -hmm. can't move the bed. I had, a, I had people show up to put the bed in because it's like, you can't, even if you just want to like scooch it over an inch, you can't do it. And it's tall enough in the area where I can't reach anything by like three or four feet. Mm -hmm. So to get the cable back in, I had to grab my walking cane that I yeah. keep by the bed in case of intruders and start just batting at where it plugs into the wall to try to push the cable back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go. No. <laughs> oh, no. Cats Cats definitely, um, they do stuff to mess with you. Um, oh. So we've now spent a good, you know, 15 minutes talking about cats. Oh, yeah. Which is we, we, theory five. Cats. We, we can't have cats on this show. <laughs> Because we just talk about cats. We can't. Yeah, it's true. Sorry, no, ca no cat-based cryptids. <laughs> I mean, and uh, the fairies. Yeah. And then there's the Yule Cat. There is the Yule Cat. Yeah. Uh, so a tenant of Aller Farm and Dawlish noted that the thaw and rain, which occurred during the night, half melted his cat's tracks and froze them into the shape of a small hoof. This goes back to your point previous of uh, tracks melting and becoming um, more obscured as time goes on. With uh, still the impression of the cat's claws, enclosed uh, and reported this, ob ob uh, this observation to the Reverend Edward Furson, vicar of Dawlish. If the villages of Devon contained anything like the number of domestic cats that would nowadays be found in similar, similarly sized communities, and given the great prevalence of rats and mice, there may have been more. And uh, if they were allowed to wander, cat tracks may well have been responsible for many of the hoof prints, including those on the rooftops. I did not write that. That came out of the article. I'm not really jiving with the cat theory. Well, really, it's just showing the cat's true form. Yeah. And their footprints. It is. It As is. little demons. <laughs> that I love. They're so, like, if they didn't show them, like, if you didn't see their tummy so much, they'd be monsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Theory six, donkeys. Donkeys are noted mostly because of the similarity of their tracks to those found. Theo Brown discovered in the course of her researches that donkeys are the only animal that plant their feet in an almost perfect single line, which convinced her that uh, a stray had probably left at least some of the tracks in the exposed locations. This to me may explain some of the tracks, but given the range that the tracks expand, um, th this falls short of a firm the oh, words explanation of so all of them. So you know the L.A. Noir. You know how there's that doubt button. Yeah, you I hit just, it. Was, I was slamming that one, and the reason <laughs> for that is I almost guarantee that there are other animals that plant their feet in an almost perfect single line. Yeah, I think this is more of the a single. It was a combination of single line and the shape of the hoof. Okay. Because um, I'm that, just saying, yeah. like bears do it too. Bears do do it too. Yeah. Theory seven, gypsies. Of course. It has, of course. Why not? You know, because it because it's. I don't even need to know this full the entirety of this 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 theory. Yeah, it's racism. That's oh yeah, the answer. It's a hundred percent racism as to why the gypsies have been chosen. Oh yeah, it has been suggested by several people, 
including Manfi Wood and an, in a, and an individual named Graham, that over the course of 18 months, that four to 500 of the Romani peoples constructed a series of stilts worn on both hands and feet, and they organized this event. However, to me, this is easily attributed to blatant widespread racism, nationalism, and bigotry that has been shown towards the Romani, along with many others of different religion and color and nationality and culture for the last several hundred years and persists today. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a big, like, over over a year, a group of 500 people did this, this organized this. This is next. This is like... It's like next level racism. It's it's the most ridiculous racism I've ever yeah. heard. Just just like yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they did it. Yeah. <laughs> like well what about the Romani? Yeah. We need to blame someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that one I I listed it because it several it's, it was it was brought up so and I was weird. like this is crazy. Oh, boy. oh man. Theory eight rabbits. One reporter once said that a rabbit truck's a rabbit's track looked sort of like the devil's footprints. That's about it. I brought it up because some, some reporter said it. That's dumb. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. Yep. Theory nine kangaroos. South of the footprints. There were a pair of kangaroos kept in a private menagerie. I have conflicting sources, one stating that the pair escaped and the other stating that they did not. Whatever the fate of these creatures, I find it unlikely that it was them, as kangaroo tracks are much larger than those described by the witnesses, and the sheer distance they would have needed to travel uh, seems impossible. Also, yeah, um, I would have found out about it in the Enfield car case. True. Yeah. 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 Kangaroos are pretty big scapegoats too. They they come up more often than anybody would think. Theory ten: monkeys. A different menagerie, this one traveling nearby, housed a monkey. It was brought up that this may be the culprit. However, this seems more uh sorry less likely than the kangaroo. How many menageries are traveling around the English countryside? Like, there's a point where there's too many, right? Like, I don't know. There's so... For two two separate menageries with escaped animals to be... <laughs> there's... I'm just oh. imagining, like, a mena- uh, like a traveling menagerie. Yeah. And one of them is just like, Hey, this is our territory. Yeah, this is our territory. We're kangaroo men. <laughs> ah, well, I got monkeys. Ah, like, ah, ah, ah. And then they I, fisticuff fight. Ah. Um, but then they see a Romani and they're just like, hey, screw that guy. Yeah, screw that guy. We could be friends. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what happened. Yeah. Like, I play a, a video game called Fallen London and menageries come up a lot, but not as much as in this article. This is crazy. Like, I just. <laughs> Oh, it just I, I'm imagining that the English countryside is more menagerie than person where it's just like <laughs> so uh so what's your job uh I, I run a menagerie yeah me too <laughs> hey what's your job over there I got a menagerie yeah okay <sighs> theory 11 wolves this one is out right off the bat, as wolves have been extinct in the UK since the 1600s when Scotsman Ewan Cameron killed the last one. Because we're terrible. Yeah, because because everybody's terrible. Like, they know when the last wolf was killed. That's, that, that's, so it's, they, it's not them. How terrible is that, though? Like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's such a level of species genocide. Yeah. That you know to the day when the last one died, practically. Yeah. Well, they used to hold, um, I forget what it's called, essentially wolf hunts, where it'd be like, okay, this guy's going out, he's bringing his team, and they just go out and hunt packs of wolves. It's unfortunate, though, too, because it totally destroys local ecology. Like, it I get does. It. And the same thing is happening 
to the um uh to to, <laughs> to the Kellis cat basically of Scotland that they've been uh they've been openly killed for so long that there's less than a hundred left uh there's specifically it seems i don't know about many other areas uh for some reason most of my research takes place near Scotland that they tend to focus on a animal and just wipe it out uh wolves completely almost completely with the scottish wildcat they're almost completely extinct now yeah i I feel like that's just the way people are yeah uh anywho it's unfortunate theory 12 the weather i always i always knew the weather was up to something bad it's always up to something bad one source used the same quote by john a rennie that i used in the amphir life more episode to reiterate, uh, to reiterate, to re- to re- to, uh, to restate, John A. Rennie uh, uh, wrote in his book *The Romantic Strathspey*. He describes them as 19 inches long, 14 inches wide. They were each about seven feet apart, and there's no discernible difference from left and right foot, and proceeded in a single line. Fortunately, he saw them again. This time they appeared before his eyes, apparently caused by precipitation in the area. He continues that in that moment, I knew that the Wendigo, Abominable Snowman, Bodak Moor, or what have you, was forever explained as far as I was concerned. So they brought up the same source uh, again, saying it was a possible weather event. And once again, I need to make a note. (laughs) The Wendigo is not known for its footprints. No, never, <laughs> never. It's never been brought up. I don't know why he, uh, I, I don't know that, that, that quote just bugs me. Like I get, I, I agree with the, the, the spirit of the quote, but I disagree with the choice of monsters. Like, <laughs> like a bum little sm- snowman. I get when to go. Come on, get out of here. Oh, get out of here. Theory 13. Otters. One source went on for way too long. The gist is that they can go through pipes. Again, this is dumb. Their tracks look nothing like those seen. Uh, how did, how they got on the roof, I don't know. And how did an army of otters show up and leave without uh, leaving any more evidence? It would be more clear if an otter showed up. Uh, I want you to read what you wrote there. Excuse me. You yeah. skipped you skipped what you wrote. I need the world to know what you wrote. Uh okay. Okay. The last bit, the last two words of that of that sentence. <laughs> I need the world to know that you wrote that and I need them to hear it in your voice. <laughs> How did an army of otters show up and leave without leaving more ottery evidence? There we go. <laughs> that had to happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ottery evidence. Yeah. Monster. <laughs> you know, I was going to make a joke about Mudge, the, the Otter Man. Yeah. But, uh, no, no. Ottery evidence wins it. <laughs> it's over. <sighs> no further jokes. F- no further jokes? Okay. I'm done. Theory 14. Mice. Thomas Fox, one of the many correspondents who wrote to the Illustrated London News in March 1855, appears to have been the first to suggest that the devil's hoof marks may have been made by rodents, specifically by rats. Fox and his brother found tracks in the latter's garden and uh, very like those described from Devon. And more than 100 years later, similar trails were discovered uh, in Epping Forest by zoologist Alfred Lutzger, who uh, subsequently delivered a lecture on the subject to the Zoological Society and wrote up his theory for the Journal of Animals. To summarize, he thinks that rat tracks look similar, but not that they were the cause. So then why even propose as a theory? Why even propose as a theory? Theory 15. One guy followed a toad and said he thinks it did it. He's an idiot. And then John just added, probably licked it. 
<laughs> See, I like I like the Google Doc because it gives us a new layer of comedy that we can uh, we can draw upon. Where yeah. I actively interrupt your your scripts. <laughs> um, it's good fun. It's very very much. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, I can tell. <laughs> Theory 16. Aliens. George Lyall posited that the tracks were really from a laser shot out of an alien ship to take measurements. That's all I wrote. Well, because that. Because. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What? <laughs> it's, so, it's literally just aliens <laughs> that's all it is that's that's there's no there's no reason or logic to what he has stated <laughs> yeah <laughs> a- aliens shot the ground why do people like to blame aliens for everything it's not their fault it's not i don't know why it's not fair it's another form of race it's another form of racism except in this case it's different in that it's it's fictional oh man theory 17 i would like to say at this point i started getting mad at the article because i spent too much time going through all of these theories and it's it's crazy theory 17 water monsters why are there so many theories about hoof prints i don't know i don't know half half of this it's most theories. Of this, most of this story is about the weird theories that people come up with for dumb things. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's crazy. Like, the event itself is just, there was a bunch of footprints. Yeah. I, it, uh, if, if we just I, covered I the event on this episode, it would literally be a five-minute episode. Yeah. Feet print done showed up once. End. Theory 17, Water Monsters. This appeared to be one of the more popular theories. Apparently, it has a small degree of similarity to another case, and it, in some uh, ways, explains why the footprints were heading to the water. However, aside from having no substantiating evidence, I am not aware of any water animal with hooves, either cloven or like those of a donkey. Well, clearly a kelpie. I mean, we... Clearly a Kelpie. That's on my list. Thanks Kelpie. for adding a period to the end of the sentence. It's important. <laughs> Grammar is important. Theory 18. Mine. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is known that meteorological phenomena can cause animals to become more active. Or, if you're my cats... A thunderstorm can make you run like crazy and hide under the bed. It is my thought that some weather activity, possibly one similar as described by John A. Rennie, or some other phenomena, or even thunder snow, caused some of the local wildlife to become more active during the night. The weather itself, along with the natural thawing of these footprints, may make them to appear more uniform with each other as the, de- uh, as the details of the prints erode. This would account for the great area in which the prints would span, as well as for the diversity of the description and the odd places where they were found. I also have it on good authority that animals not only drink from rivers on occasion, but have the ability to cross them as well. Witchcraft! 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 Yeah, even if they're frozen on top. This may explain why some witnesses observed the tracks leading to and even crossing water. So, yeah, that's it. And Thunder Snow, by the way, is it's pretty cool, and it's um, it explains some other f- phenomena. It's basically when sn- uh, there's a snowstorm, but there's thunder. Um, or, yeah. here's, my, here's my hypothesis about the water crossing. Yeah. Uh, water wasn't frozen, but, but there were basilisk lizards, and they just ran across that water. <laughs> they don't care yeah. even if they're who cares if they're cold-blooded it's it's you know sub-zero who cares yeah they're 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 yeah. working they're doing stuff i guess they're doing stuff totally yeah they're uh, probably they're, all dead they're they're all dead the reality is that we just don't know what this was and it was so long ago we have no witnesses so all we have to go by is by what was written in these papers 
I would now like to do some bragging. Of course. Of course. I tied together episode 13 with the devil. The winter with a snow event. The dollop podcast with grandma's boy, which is the end of the episode soundbite. Uh, soundbite. Uh, spoilers and, spoilers and those all have dave anthony in common and the commercial music uh i tied together with the romani the music was jazz manouche commonly known as gypsy jazz a style created by french romani and one of my favorite guitarists django reinhardt so i tied this one together so well all the different parts all the different parts they they they're all related and then I talked about Transformers. <laughs> and then John talked about Transformers. <laughs> Which has nothing to do with anything other than I like them. <laughs> hey, Brandon here with a quick edit point. I would like to take this moment to thank one of, if not the most majestic human beings on this planet. That would be Clay Sinclair. Thank you, Clay. Clay is one of our jackalopes. If you would like to have your names added into these episodes, as well as get additional sponsor content that we're working on getting out in the very near future, feel free to join our Patreon. I won't go on too long because I'm sure that we all mention it in the near future somewhere closer to the end of this episode. So as always, if you want to check out our website where we keep all this stuff, uh, it's Cryptopedia. Cast.com. I always include it in the show notes. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram or Twitter, it's at CryptopediaCast. Email is us at CryptopediaCast.com or CryptopediaCast at gmail.com. It all goes to the same place. We got a Facebook group, which no one has joined. Uh, <laughs> if you're enjoying the podcast, rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you review, ideally review on iTunes just because it's really hard to find all the different reviews and ratings um if you have requests send them to us so monsters stories um that you've encountered things along those lines i appreciate it it can be very difficult to find a good cryptid each week if you have any good creepy pasta or cryptid pasta i'll be more than happy to read them when i have free time and i'm allowed to scream in my house <laughs> um, because usually the way that that those get recorded is i have a little bit of time and then I sit down and I just scream into a microphone for an hour. It's um, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, commercial ideas. <laughs> Brandon apparently is desperate. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I have no commercial ideas. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you have any commercial ideas that you'd like to be read, whether it be, they be related to serial killers or otherwise, write in! I come up with them every week, and uh, stuff's hard, man. <laughs> Wait, we haven't been being paid by bag gloves? Uh, I mean... Where's that they, check? Anyone who used our discount code for vague gloves, we, we do get a slice of that. So no one used it, okay. <laughs> Got it. You can follow me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. And I would like to say that we've been pretty more, like, way more active on Twitter recently. Some, we, yeah, we've we got have. Some, some good stuff. I, I had uh, to... Some solid chuckles. Yeah, there's been some pretty good interactions. Yeah, uh, not with anyone who listens to the podcast, but you know, I, I've been interacting with people who don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's been about uh, 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 mo mo <laughs> basically, we've been bantering a lot. Yeah, I also post a lot of gifts of, of Sasquatch dancing. A that that particular set of images is a pretty good resource. I I've dug into that well a couple of times. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. If you want to see the dumb things I do, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at View2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. 
Email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art is done by Tom Hill. You can follow him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. What is that ringing? Do I have a tumor? Hello? Hey, Dante, is Alex there? Hold on. Phone's for you. I think it's the devil.